All right, hey again, uh, Drawing One students. So what I want to do is give you the next drawing exercise, um, and it's related to last week's. We're just going to get a little bit more um, complicated with the value, but not by much. So the first thing I want you to do is to basically duplicate what we did last week. So you're going to create a 16 by 16 rectangle, um, and just leave it blank for the moment. I've got tone in it right now, but um, leave it blank when you first put it in. And then I want you to lay out um, a two, two inch by 14 inch uh, value scale. So again, each square is two by two inches, but now we've got seven of them instead of five. So we're just expanding our scale from a five step scale to a seven step scale. Okay. So, and you'll see I've already done, I've already done mine here, um, but it gets a little bit more, as you expand your scale, it gets a little bit more difficult to, to create an even step between each um, block of value. So, um, so just take your time with it. It'll take you a little bit more time than the five step scale. Again, we're after like a, not just a jump between each one, but an even jump. So that one feels like one to two, feels like two to three, and so on down the line. Um, and also as you expand your scale, there's a tendency to make the scale too dark. And I think a lot of times it comes from starting with your number two too dark. So the white of the page is very light, so you've got to really be careful about not going too dark with the number two value. So when you divide this in half, you want to kind of feel like there's a light side and a dark side to your scale. Like you don't want this dark to kind of start creeping down here because then again, you, you reduce your ability to use values to indicate lighter values that you see up there, right? So, um, so you want to try to keep this scale as expansive as, as possible, okay? So once you've done that, then you're going to, again, with your medium value, which in this case is a four instead of a three, we're going to um, mass in a tone that, that um, at least gets in the ballpark again at that, um, that middle value. Okay. Then um, our subject matter this time is going to be a little different. What I want you to do is to get a clear water glass and fill it about three quarters away with water and then put a spoon in it. And then you're going to set it up on a table and just try to put um, a couple of simple values behind it, as I've done here. That gives you some interesting range of value within the glass. Pull the glass away from the side. I don't want you to, have to deal with any kind of shadows yet. So, um, you know, put it in an area where you get some light, but not, um, but not a really harsh direct light. Because I don't want, again, I don't want there to be a lot of, um, like, cast shadows and so forth. We're going to talk about that later. So here I've got the lighting coming from the window. I've also pulled it away from the background so I don't create any cast shadows on the background. Okay. All right, so then once you've done all that, then what we're going to do is draw the glass and again, try to map out the large, the largest value areas that we see. And again, do this, do this pretty big. So let's see, I want the get this spoon in there. So ideally you're doing something that's going to be um, you know, a little bit bigger than life size. Yeah. Here's my background. The wall plane meets the ground plane back here. And here's my spoon. Glass. Keeping things flat at the beginning. Just thinking about the big, big proportions versus width. Okay. And then when I've got, when I feel like that's in the ballpark, then I can think about you know, how this glass is kind of like a cylinder or a slightly um, converging cone, All right? So down here, I'm going to imagine this ellipse, which has a horizontal axis to it, and an ellipse up here, which has a horizontal axis to it, and paying attention to how much of this ellipse that I see. So I'm kind of looking down on this. I want to make sure that I see more more of an elliptical shape here, or a wider elliptical shape here than, than up here. All right, and then my, so then I'm also gonna find this elliptical shape in here, which is going to signify where the top of the water is. And then, uh, it should be a little bit bigger than that one I put up here. And then my spoon is coming down. And you know, as a spoon comes into the water, it's gonna refract. So where the spoon comes over here, and then it's gonna jog over and underneath the water, it's gonna pick up over, over here. And then my spoon shape is gonna be, yeah. 
And it also magnifies a little bit too, so that the spoon in the water is gonna look a little bit bigger to you than, than this part here. It's gonna look like it's enlarged. Okay, so I have, may not be able to see it too clearly yet, but I've got the idea of my, my spoon entering the water, coming out in here. And then what I wanna do is sort of look again, and as with that reflective object, just think about the biggest uh, puzzle pieces that I see. So I've got a value back here, and then I've got a very similar value up top here. And then it gets darker here. This part up here is um, with, that shows the top of the water. From where I am, you may not be able to see it um, in the video, but this is a darker value. So I'm going to kind of just map out the shape of that. Again, the idea here is to create, as with the last one, create very definite sort of puzzle pieces. Don't think about trying to make things look like water or that you've got to make it look wet or anything like that. That's not, that's not what we do as artists. All we're doing is translating what we see into shapes of tone. It's as simple as that. And you don't want to make it, you don't want to make it uh, more complicated for yourself by bringing ideas of, of water into it. Because as artists, we don't have we don't really have that in our toolbox. We don't pull out water or spoons or anything. All we have is value, line, tone, shape, and when we get to painting, color. But we don't have we don't have the things. So you don't want to think in terms of things. You want to think in terms of just shapes of a lighter or darker value. All right. So then here it gets down, gets a little bit more complicated, some smaller shapes in here, but I'm just gonna ignore those and just squint and think about what are the okay, what are the biggest shapes that I see here. Wrap those in. And then the spoon, I've got shape like this. And some of these shapes are going to change a little bit as I block things in, but just trying to, um, again, keep things as sort of large and simple as possible. Okay, so I've got that in. This, this, and just a little more shape in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to map in my value. So again, I want to kind of think ahead and think about how I'm going to how I'm going to strategize with these values. So this back here, even though it's white, it's not my lightest light. Like the reflection is going to be the lightest light. So my, my reflections in here are going to be a one. This is going to be a two out here. So this is going to be a two in here also. This is going to be two. The top of this or this area in here, which is a little bit darker out here, that'll be a That'll be a three, and then up here I go darker, so this is gonna be either a four or a five. We'll say a four, four for part of the spoon. There's gonna be a little area of, well, I'll have to go five. And I may not use, um, so this will be, this will be five in here also, and okay, five in, five in here as well. And I may not, I may not use a seven, or I may not even use a six. I don't, I don't know. Or I might change a five, one of these fives to a six. This might be a six here. So we'll just have to see. So some of those ideas might change. So let me get some of this blocked in real quickly, and then um, I'll do a short follow-up video that shows you the drawing developed a little bit. Okay, so this, this be not here. That's going to be a four with a. Four five on the edge. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll have to take this four down to four. We'll have to go down to a two here. So this will have to lighten up. And here will be a four. Okay, this is going to be four in here as well. And one of the things you notice when you when we keep our values really simple is that. Um, because we're keeping our values really simple, the values will connect with one another. And that's an important idea in, in drawing is to, is to see how 
like values of different objects. So like the spoon and this water in here, they're different objects, they're different things, but they're the same value. And so visually they connect and they join. And that's something that's, that's important to um, keep in mind because it has a lot of um, creative implications for us that we won't get into now, but um, it's good to, good to just know about. And it's not a bad thing. Like if you lose an edge, all of a sudden, you know, like part of this joins with this, so like right, right back here, this actually seems to visually connect with that background. Those are actually places as an artist that you look for. You don't have to telegraph the whole outline of the, of the form. In fact, it, it often feels a little bit more um, realistic when you don't do that because we don't naturally, we don't naturally see that way. Our eyes moving around, it's not, it's not going around the edge of all these forms. It's sort of flitting around and sort of seeing shapes as they relate to one another, how, how the, uh, the values sort of come together. So this is gonna be a five down here and a five down here. All right, so I feel like my um, my video is getting a little uh, going a little bit longer than I, I anticipated. So I think you get the idea of where I'm going with this. So I'm going to stop, work on this, and then I'll come back and explain to you what I've done.